This was a really good throw by the catcher to retire R1 trying to advance. Unfortunately, I stepped in front of the camera at the worst possible time, so I can't even get a close-up of that play. Well, I checked out on this play. Ball was hit to left field. Eric went out on that, and I was supposed to come up the line, and I just stayed put. I saw Ken hustling over, and I thought, oh, boy. Yep. And... <laughs> He just gave me the funniest look, and I just went over, shook his hand. Thanks for letting me know, Ken. I'm not crazy when a batter tries to make my call for me. If it's that close, let me make the call. Hustle! Hustle! And I overcompensated for the fact that I didn't rotate on the prior play, and this time I rotated on a play I should have stayed home on. So, bummer. And I thought I had plenty of time to get back to home, but that throw came in way faster than I expected. I was not in the best position to see this play, but that runner was clearly out. It's pretty cool to watch a game clip back and just know that you nailed the call. This was not that time. I kicked this call. I feel absolutely horrible for it. I had the battle runner running halfway down, then veering inside, and then veering out to try to interfere with that throw. Now, I was locked in on the battle runner running inside, and he clearly was. And when I looked up, I saw the first baseman missing the throw. What looked to me by just a little bit, and... Maybe it wasn't the best throw in the world, but I had it as being catchable. When I watched it back on instant replay, that was not a quality throw. It was not catchable. And unfortunately, my call cost them two runs and a runner on first with two outs. And instead, it ended the inning. You know, this is the downside sometimes of making a call in the moment and you think it's right based on all the available evidence and just getting it wrong and um, this sucks go on Nico we're hitting up when a pitcher starts their delivery they can slow down they can pause like right there they didn't he didn't come to a complete stop there, but you'll see in this next pitch, when he raises his leg, he comes to a complete stop right there before he continues his motion. And that is a start-stop lock. I took some heat for this pitch, but whew, that's right at the top of the knees. Perfect pitch. Go, go, go! Coming in! This runner was safe at home, no tag, came back, touched home plate, but was he? First, what does the rule say? A runner is out when running more than three feet away from their base path to avoid being tagged. And then the next sentence says, a runner's base path is established when the tag attempt occurs and is a straight line from the runner to the base which they were attempting to reach. We can see that right here, the fielder has the ball and the base path is established. Andy very clearly did not run more than three feet out of the base path, came back and touched home. We got together on this one just to make sure that I had the call right. You know, sometimes you just don't have the right angle on it. So other umpires that have a different view of that play can give you some additional feedback. In this case here, 
Everyone who saw it had the exact same thing or didn't have any additional information to offer. So after a brief review, that runner was safe at home. During this rotation, Ken got body blocked by the first base coach. Listen to the visitors' dugout scream and shriek as the pitcher starts his motion. In a prior video, I said there was no Little League rule against making noise and cheering. However, that's not entirely true. While it's not spelled out in the Little League rule book, it is clarified in the Rules Instruction Manual, commonly known as the RIM, and it's also clarified on the Little League website. Now, sometimes Little League will post information on their website, and even though it may not be in the rule book, it is just as much of a rule if it is on their website. So, rule clarification, cases, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at that. The rule in question is 406C, and it says that no manager, coach, or player shall at any time, whether from the bench or the playing field, make any move calculated to cause a balk or illegal pitch. The ability for a team to cheer for their batter or runners should not be restricted. Ah, but let's look at the highlighted section. Unless there is a definite intent to gain an unfair advantage as discussed under this rule. Which that was. I mean, there was no other reason to just start screaming as the pitcher starts their pitching motion when there is a runner on base. The chanting slash cheering must be in good taste and be directed solely at their own team. A good rule of thumb is the chants slash cheers may be as loud as the team desires as long as there's no crescendo or shrieking when the pitcher is delivering the pitch and no artificial noise making is allowed. That includes pounding on buckets, fences, that kind of thing, air horns. One thing that is important in this is that this rule only covers the players and the coaches and the manager that's in the dugout. It doesn't cover fans that are on the outside. That's more of a general sportsmanship issue that your site director is responsible for. 